ओके डियर स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज़ मुस्तफ़ा अहमद मिर्चावाला योर एस पी आर ट्रेनर एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट अ रीसेंट पास पेपर क्वेश्चन एंड दैट इज डिसम्बर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फॉर डिसम्बर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री अटैम्प्ट राइट ओके नाउ जस्ट फॉर योर मोटिवेशन लेट मी शो यू आर रीसेंट पोजिशन दीज आर आर वर्ल्ड वाइड एंड नेशन वाइड पोजिशन इन लास्ट डिसम्बर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री अटैम्प्ट देर आर टोटल ट्वेल्व पोजिशन हेयर राइट नाउ इट्स ट्वेल्व पोजिशन बट एक्चुअली इट्स थर्टीन वन पोजिशन अनाउंस लाइक लास्ट वन और टू डेज बिफोर इट्स इट्स नॉट इंक्लूड इन इन दिस सो वैन दीज स्टूडेंट्स कैन डू ऑब्वियसली यू कैन यू कैन बी पार्ट ऑफ दिस पोजिशन राइट I hope you guys will also be part of these positions soon, right? Okay. And then in this past paper, the objective of this past paper question is to give you guys confidence. The first objective is to give you guys confidence, and you can see how I approach these this latest consolidation question. And yes, this and also includes this also includes the pre-populated area, which is the new area. I'll be solving that also for you. Okay. Now. as you already know that uh, in the in the exam you will be given these in the form of exhibits but i have taken pictures i have taken out that question and i'll explain you here right okay and definitely i'll be going i'll be going to that pre populated area very soon in this class now the first thing is kabilo company the name of this question is kabilo company kabilo company is a parent company of a group whose financial year end is 31st december x5 right the following exhibits the following the following exhibits available on the left hand side on the screen provide information of the relevant right number one is acquisition of trudos acquisition of trudos company so we are parent company kabilo is parent and we have during this year during this year we have acquired a subsidiary trudo and don't forget your year end your year end is 31st december x5 your year end is 31st of december x5 your year end is 31st december x5 right okay now <clears throat> provide information regarding the acquisition of trudos company and other information relevant to complete the consolidated statement of cash flows okay then we have one more exhibit of financial instrument but don't worry about it it's not pure ifrs 9 this is this thing is just just the basic just the basic financial instrument discussion so don't worry about it right then next you have consolidated statement consolidated statements like this include the draft extracts they will they have given you a ready made consolidated cash flow but yes that cash flow lacks some of the adjustments some of the adjustments you need to do it yourself some of the adjustments you need to do it yourself you need to do it yourself right okay so now we are moving towards the question okay so we are moving towards the question now these are the requirements given to you these are the requirements dear student in front of you is one is adjust requirement number a is adjust your the pre populated spreadsheet to prepare revise revise extracts to the operating and investing activities you need to make two activities two activities one is operating activities and the other one is investing activities already they have given you but you need to revise it you need to revise it using the excel and that spreadsheet thing okay so this is the practical requirement now the other two requirements are theoretical requirement the other two requirements are purely theoretical requirements pure theoretical requirements are there okay now without move wasting a time let's move let's move to the question let's move to the question see in the in front of you you can see here they they are saying kabilo company kabilo is basically parent company kabilo is basically parent company kabilo company acquired 80% of the 100000 ordinary shares of trudos company on 30th june x5 so the first and the most important message this is the mid year acquisition we have acquired this company in mid of the year and yes we have taken 80% shares of this trudo subsidiary company so s company means subsidiary company means trudo company has already issued 100000 shares and we have acquired 80% so 80% of 100000 means we have acquired 80000 shares now 
how much we paid let's see the types of consideration in this question so the first type of consideration so the first type of consideration is first type of consideration is cash consideration start please from here the consideration consisted of a cash payment of dollar five dollar five per share acquired now hold now hold how many shares i just told you we have purchased 80,000 shares. We have purchased 80,000 shares. So 80,000 shares we have bought and we are paying for one share. We are paying $5. So 80,000 multiplied by 5 is 400,000. 400,000 is your cash consideration. 400,000 is your cash consideration. 400,000 is your cash consideration. Okay. Now, next thing is now that there is a share consideration and issue of one Tabilo company dollar one equity share for every four shares acquired in Trudeau's. What does it mean? That means four shares of S company will come to us and we'll give one share of P company, right? So four shares will be coming from S company and in, in return of four shares, we'll give one share. So the fraction will be one upon four. Fraction will be one upon four. Now how to calculate? Tell me how many shares we have bought right now S from S company, it's 80,000 shares. So we have bought 80,000 shares of S company and in return we are giving 1 upon 4. For every 4 shares we are giving 1 share. So 80,000 into 1 upon 4 is 20,000 shares of P company. 20,000 shares of P company. That means as a consideration, as a consideration we are paying 20,000 shares of P company. Or sometimes, sometime in my class I say, as a consideration, we are giving 20,000 chocolates. We are giving 20,000 chocolates. Now, can you see, you can see the screen. What is the pr market price of one chocolate of P company? What is the market price? This is the market price. See, the fair value of Kabilo's companies and Trudeau's companies shares on 30th June X5 was 13. Now, right now, for us, for us, this 13 is relevant. Yes, 8 will also be used. But right now, for us, this 13 is relevant. So parent company has given 20,000 shares as a consideration or we call it 20,000 chocolates as a consideration and price of one chocolate is price of one chocolate is price of one chocolate is dollar 13. So this will be 20,000 into 13 is 260,000. So this is your shares consideration and this is your cash consideration. One is your shares consideration and the other one is your cash consideration. So within seconds, within seconds, I have calculated you the cash consideration and shares consideration. Okay. Right now, the next thing, next thing is, next thing is, <clears throat> you know, in this question, we need to calculate goodwill as well. So my respected student for goodwill in full goodwill method, we need to calculate the fair value of NCI as well. In full goodwill method, we need to calculate fair value of NCI as well. And you know, in this question, just think over it. S company has issued total 100,000 shares, 100,000 shares, okay? And out of 100,000 shares, parent company has bought 80,000 shares. So that means the remaining 20,000 shares are with NCI. So in this question, NCI means 20,000 shares. And whenever you need to calculate fair value of NCI, sometimes they give you they give they give you ready-made fair value of NCI, and sometimes and sometimes and sometimes you need to calculate fair value of NCI through S company share price. So in this question, can you see the screen? This see this see this the fair value of Kabilo's companies and Trudeau's companies, Kabilo companies and Trudeau's companies. That means S company share price is now eight dollars. So one share of S company is $8 and how many shares NCI has? They have 20,000 shares. So, so if we want to calculate fair value of NCI, so this, that means it's 20,000 shares multiplied by the fair value of one share is $8. So it will be 160,000. Okay. So the third thing I have calculated for you guys is fair value of NCI at acquisition. We have calculated this will help us to calculate goodwill. This will help us to calculate goodwill. This will help us to calculate goodwill. Okay. So now let's move on. 
now the carrying amount now the special thing you know when i was when uh, when i teach in my class this is definitely a revision class the past paper class when i give the normal lecture of consolidated cash flow i normally emphasize on these things like number one that there are two major events in the ca consolidated cash flow question number one during the year sometime you acquire company and during the year sometime you dispose of a subsidiary company sometimes you acquire subsidiary company sometime you dispose of the company now what is what happens when you acquire a subsidiary when you acquire a subsidiary everything of this that subsidiary comes and meet you meet you so that means your all balances are updated your ppe gets updated your inventory your receivables your payables your liabilities everything are shaked up right because the new things is added up okay so be careful with this event this takeover event will change will update all your assets and liabilities okay so we need to take care about this event now see they are saying the carrying amount it's not the fair value it's the carrying amount important word of the net assets of reported Trudeau's at 30th June X5 were as follows. See, when we bought this company, we got the PPE. We, this company had has this PPE, this inventory, this receivable, this cash and this trade payable. That's all. Okay. So all these things are with this company. Now, the first thing is, first thing is, remember, listen to me. Whenever you buy a subsidiary company, and you are paying cash so it's the cash is going out of the group whenever you buy a running business and you are buying a subsidiary and if you are paying cash consideration so it's an outflow now giving you one very good example listen just think see this see on the video see on the video you can see my wallet let us say today i bought this wallet for five thousand dollars today i bought this wallet for five thousand dollars and when i bought it and i opened it and i i took out some so when i took out i got like one thousand dollars already present in it one thousand dollars already present in it now repeat i bought this wallet for five thousand dollars but when i opened it and i checked it so one thousand dollars were already present in it that means net outflow is only four thousand okay because i just paid five thousand but already one thousand is present in this wallet so my net outflow is four thousand okay similarly in this question in this question we paid some cash i'm just asking about the cash consideration we paid cash consideration of four four hundred thousand so this is your outflow but when we bought this company some cash is already present in this company some cash is already present in this company and that is 24900 c so you know what what's our net outflow four hundred thousand minus 24900 the difference will be your net outflow for investing activities the difference will be your net outflow for investing activities i hope you remember this i normally teach in in my starting lectures of cash flow okay now one more thing see whenever now the important area of this course i'm teaching you right the heart of this area heart of this whole class when you buy a running business, see this running business contains inventory, receivable and payable. So that means during the year, during the year we bought this company, that means these balances were not part of your year beginning year balance. These inventory balances were not part of your beginning year balance. But yes, 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 yes. When you acquired during the year, so these are part of your closing balances. So this inventory, receivable and payable are part of your closing balances so we need to remove it we need to remove this balance because we need to check the pure pure increase or decrease in receivable payable and inventory because of trading reason this reason buying a subsidiary buying a subsidiary is not a trading reason buying a subsidiary is not a genuine movement not a trading movement of inventory receivable and payable so hope you receive hope you remember operating activities in operating activities there is a requirement you need to report increase or decrease in inventory receivable and payable so please adjust these things from there now wait 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 let me do it first of all read this statement read this statement useful statement the statement of cash flows figures from movements for movements in inventory straight receivables straight payables and property plant and equipment have been calculated by considering simply the differences in the year end balances in the consolidated okay so they have just taken 
x4 and x5 means opening and closing balances and they just calculated it but yes that op closing balances also include the movement of the movement of the new subsidiary the closing balances also include i just proved the this new subsidiary thing so we need to remove it we need to remove it now listen 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 let me see this is the question part this whatever you are seeing right now this is present in the question this is present in the question and they have already given you a they have already given you a ready-made cash flow statement statement of cash flow but you need to adjust few things now wait here you can see increase in inventory increase in receivable and increase in trade increase in payable now what does now now i will take some time i'll take some time and i need i need you i want you to watch me very carefully now listen increase means just thing i'm giving you example for example the opening is 2 and closing is 10 opening inventory is 2 and closing is 10 so there is an increase of how much 8 okay now just think closing balance as i told you uh, in this question the closing balance already includes this subsidiary the new subsidiary thing so let us say the closing balance include dollar three. Just I'm assuming the numbers. The closing balance of inventory includes dollar three for the new subsidiary. So if you remove something from closing balance, if you remove something from closing balance, so this will be seven. Now can you check two and seven? The difference between two and seven is just five. So use your brain. Now whenever you re reduce your closing, whenever you reduce, whenever you remove something from your closing balance, ultimately the effect of increase will decrease the effect of the in the increase in inventory previously it was eight previously the increase in inventory was eight but now it's just five now it's just five now it's just five okay right so what's the objective the numbers which were given in the question in the question we need to we need to remove it re, we need to reduce our increase amount we need to reduce our increase amount okay let me rub it so in this question see as we know increase in inventory increase in inventory is equal to decrease in cash that's why it's a negative number and now we need to reduce this number we need to reduce this negative number so how will it reduce we'll add something this is already negative this is also negative so we'll add how much was that let let me check how much was that in the question let me check for you wait let me check for you it was two five six eight hundred two five six eight hundred for inventory now increase in receivable is already negative so we need to reduce it so again we'll do plus so two two zero three hundred I'll show you the numbers okay by moving the screen now one last thing we all know increase in payable is increase in cash so this number is already plus this number is already plus so now we need to reduce it so we'll do subtract we'll do subtract and you know how much is the payable with the new subsidiary it's 175 175 400 now use your brain when plus 93 900 minus 175 400 so you here you will see a negative number so this increase will finally convert into decrease in trade payable this increase will finally convert into decrease in trade payable it's such a big effect now as you are removing the effect of this new subsidiary as you are removing the effect of this new subsidiary so ultimately the increase in trade payables has converted into decrease in trade payable okay so be careful with this adjustment this is very important this is very important take giving you 30 seconds to think over it Then, 
then my respected student there is a very important thing which we call we have to make a PPE account right and as you see as you can see when we have bought when we have bought this new subsidiary when we have bought this new subsidiary this new subsidiary brought some PPE with this with with this company okay for 21,000 but that's that PPE is just the carrying amount that property plant and equipment which is coming with this subsidiary is carrying amount but you know the rules you know the rules listen that whenever you buy a running business or subsidiary you need to bring everything to fair value you need to bring the plant of that company to fair value you need to bring the plant of that company to fair value okay so let's see the only the only the only the only please concentrate please the only fair value adjustment on the acquisition related to plant which had a fair value of 50,000 above its carrying amount. Okay. So, you know, you remember this C is equal to A minus L. So, you need to, you need to increase the fair value. So, once you increase the fair value, see your plant is already at 421 and you will increase it by 50,000. You will increase it by 50,000. Okay. So, now i will be making a ppe account hope you remember you 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 guys have already done cash flow listen in the cash flow hope you remember you used to make ppe account so i'll be making a ppe account i'll be writing opening and closing balance don't worry i'll show you opening and closing balance and on the debit side i'll write this property plan and equipment because the subsidiary brought this property plan and equipment and this is not a cash flow this is not a cash flow because we have already paid for the subsidiary in one go we have already paid for the subsidiary in one go no separate payment for this pp so in the account we'll write all these things and then we'll be getting some balancing figures we will be getting some balancing figures okay right so we need to we need to bring the plant to fair value we need to bring the plant to fair value now the group pays tax at 30 percent now don't worry about it there is a topic i hope you all remember you all it's a famous topic the topic is defer tax on fair value adjustment defer tax on fair value adjustment just don't worry about it first let me make the pp account and then i'll come to the tax first let me make the ppe account and then i'll be coming to the tax okay so you can see this the this this line the depreciation charge for the group for the year ended see this is the depreciation of pp this is the depreciation of pp it will go in the credit side of the pp account and then read this line read this line there were no 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 disposals of non current assets by the group during the year although there were some additions yes paid by cash this is what we need to calculate we need to calculate some cash additions. We need to calculate some cash additions. We need to calculate some cash additions. So now see this is the part of your question. See the screen. This is the part of your question. Okay. So in your question they have given you. You can see you can see they have given you let me enlarge see property plant and equipment opening and closing balance property plant and equipment opening and closing balance the fund balance is the first balance is 31st december x4 and x5 x4 is opening and x5 is closing okay dear student x4 is opening and x5 is closing so let me make a pp account for you not difficult not difficult it's you can handle it so i have written pp and bb account okay so opening balance just you have to copy paste from the question this is three one two five three hundred it's three one two five three double zero okay and the closing balance is the closing balance is three double six eight nine hundred okay this is given in the question right then you have depreciation expense for the year which is 625060 this is also given in the question i'll show you okay then you have addition you bought a subsidiary so subsidiary bring the plant of the carrying value of the plant was 421000 yes 
and then there was a fair value adjustment of 50,000 right remember so we have written everything we have almost almost written everything now as a student you can ask one thing sir 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 sometime we write disposal here yes but as i just showed you there is no disposal there is no disposal in this question there is no disposal so just simply rub it no need of anything now let me use another color you add the right hand side and deduct the left hand side you will get some cash additions here cash additions here okay you now come on take the balancing number it will be six nine seven double six zero seven double six zero this number will go this number will go in the investing activities as an outflow this number this balancing number will go in the investing activities as an outflow because you have paid cash to buy non-current assets you have paid cash to buy non-current asset okay so now let's go to the pre-populated area i'll wait now see the question please you need to give energy it's the it's the it's the energetic thing listen in the question they have see this is the investing activities this is investing activities okay cash flow from investing activities acquisition of pp already written is five four three six hundred but the correct amount i just told you is six nine wait it's six nine seven six six zero so we need to convert this into six nine seven six six zero so you need to adjust something okay on the second column i'll be adjusting something to convert this five four three six hundred to six nine seven six six zero okay one more thing they have they have they have uh, assigned one work to us consideration paid for the acquisition of trudos i just told you for the acquisition of trudos how much cash we paid for the acquisition of trudos it's all about cash because investing activities about is, is all about cash flows in inflows and outflows so consideration paid for the acquisition of trudos you remember we paid 400000 we paid 400000 but there were some cash already present in the subsidiary like 24 something so the difference will be your net outflow the difference will be your net outflow don't worry i'll be writing it for you you can check it out you can check it out please you can check it out now the next thing is next thing is next thing is yes now i'm going to teach you the fair value adjustment sorry defer tax on fair value adjustment listen you guys you all know we normally we teachers normally teach first is12 and then we teach consolidation in is12 we teach one thing defer tax on revaluation in is16 is16 with is12 we teach defer tax on revaluation remember remember defer tax on revaluation so this fair value adjustment this fair value adjustment is also like revaluation this fair value adjustment is also like revaluation okay <clears throat> now the group pays tax 30 percent and the defer tax was correctly accounted for within the consolidation statement of financial position excellent that means they have already recorded defer tax means opening and closing balances are perfect that's very good news opening and closing balances which i am going to use they are perfect just i have to show the correct movements in the t account 
I have to show the correct movements in the T account so get the correct balancing figure of tax paid okay so what they are saying they are saying that yes within the consolidated correctly accounted for within the consolidated statement of financial position the taxation figure is the statement of profit or loss for the year ended 31st December x5 is 38 385 600 that means this is your expense see the taxation figure see see there is a typing error see this is a this is after full stop the taxation this is after full stop okay there is some typing mistake the taxation figure in the statement of profit and loss in the statement of profit and loss means tax expense so they have given you this is tax expense the PNL thing and this figure has been included as taxation paid oh ho. this is this is a wrong thing they have booked by mistake they have booked the expense as paid the expense amount has paid so definitely we need to correct it and I'll do it I'll do it don't worry about it okay so the first thing is can you tell me what is the revaluation amount the fair value adjustment in this question see it's 50,000 the fair value adjustment is 50,000 right so when this value goes up we go when this this is fair value adjustment is like upward revaluation so when this revaluation happens we go to the tax department we go to the tax department and we say and we say okay please take tax on this good news the value went up so tax department says no 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 we don't want tax now but yes we'll take tax in future because the value has increased so that means we have to pay tax in future so it's a taxable td it's a taxable td and yes we have to book defer tax liability on it defer tax liability on it so what will be the impact let me show you the impact see at 50,000, 50,000 multiplied by 30%, it's going to be 15,000. 15,000 is the defer tax on revaluation. Defer tax on revaluation, okay? And this is a defer tax liability. So at the acquisition date, when you increase your defer tax liability by 15,000, you will book a new liability. So your net assets will go down. Your net assets will go down, okay? At the acquisition, when you book a new liability of 15,000, so your defer tax, your net assets will go down at the date of acquisition and when your net assets at the date of acquisition will go down it will impact your goodwill it will impact your goodwill hope your brain is working hope your brain is working properly So my dear student let me show you some entries first you remember the revaluation entries are pp debit 50,000 this just start with the revaluation let me give you some basic training as well pp debit 50,000 and revaluation reserve credit 50,000 okay so just it's not revaluation reserve I know but I'm writing it as a revaluation reserve it's up for revaluation now multiply 30% on it so it will be revaluation reserve debit 15,000 and then defer tax liability credit 15,000 okay so these are the entries for normal defer tax on revaluation these are the entries for normal defer tax on revaluation but my respected dear students whenever whenever you do this thing at the date of takeover fair value adjustment is done fair value adjustment is done at the date of takeover so just this revaluation reserve is replaced with goodwill we write here goodwill and we also write here goodwill okay because yes this this defer tax as this is this all is happening at the date of takeover as these all things are happening at the date of takeover so it will impact your goodwill it will impact your goodwill okay so let me calculate the tax paid let me calculate the tax paid see this these are the opening and closing balance see these are the opening balance of defer tax and then opening and closing balance of current tax okay so hope you guys know the basic training 
you guys know the basic training of defer tax basic training of tax uh, of cash flows tax in cash during the cash flow question if you find any tax adjustment you make a total tax account you make a total tax account total tax means current tax plus defer tax okay so if you want to take the picture of this question you can so because i'm going to move the screen i'm gonna move the screen i'm gonna move the screen okay right so for taxation this is the game this is the game see total tax so first of all opening current tax opening current tax is 256900 256900 is opening current tax plus opening defer tax is 250000 opening defer tax is 250 okay so i have just written total opening tax and then closing closing current tax is 364300 364300 and closing defer tax is 130000 right now in this question tax expense for the year is 385 tax expense for the year is 385600 given in the question now students please check the screen see i have made this entry i have just made this entry so in this entry you can see goodwill debit and defer tax liability defer tax liability credit so it will come here this will come here this 15000 will come here now finally 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 you can calculate this tax paid add all this right hand side and deduct the left hand side so it will be 413200 this will be 413200 this is a balancing figure tax paid this is the balancing figure which we call tax paid take your time take your time Okay, now one last thing is left one last practical thing then all theory and then the pre populated thing now student hope you remember when I taught you or any teacher who teaches you in the class they make goodwill account as well they make goodwill account to calculate impairment as a balancing figure they make goodwill account to calculate impairment of goodwill as a balancing number impairment of goodwill as a balancing number okay so but for that you know you you need opening total goodwill closing total goodwill why you are saying opening and closing because this parent may have many subsidiaries with this parent may have existing many subsidiaries so there must be an opening balance of goodwill as well opening goodwill closing goodwill and during the year we acquire trudeau's during the year we acquire acquisition of trudeau's so definitely when you acquire new company when you acquire new company that company's goodwill becomes the goodwill of the group that company's goodwill becomes a part of total goodwill of the group so yes you need to calculate this this is important first thing you have to calculate this i am telling you opening and closing goodwill is given in the question opening and closing goodwill is already given in the question don't worry about it at all but this acquisition of trudeau's acquisition of trudeau's there is a goodwill which we need to calculate which you need to calculate which you need to calculate right okay so let's calculate the goodwill but because before i calculate goodwill you can see i have already taught you the coi this is your cash consideration c this 400000 is your cash consideration cash this 260000 is your shares consideration this i have already discussed cash consideration and shares consideration i have already discussed 400000 and 260000 in the beginning of the question then i taught you this fair value of nci i have already taught you i have already ta taught you this fair value of nci at acquisition at the beginning of the question right you can it's a recorded class so you can rewind it at any time you can rewind it any time right now the next thing is 
fair value of net assets so they have given you the carrying amount carrying amount of net assets yes they have given you the carrying amount of net net asset and this is the carrying amount of net assets this is basically carrying amount of net asset which is 747600 747600 747600 right but you need to bring net assets to fair value you need to bring net assets to fair value so yes there is an upward fair value adjustment of 50000 and yes, there is a defer tax. There is a defer tax of 15,000. Defer tax on fair value adjustment of 15,000, which you need to adjust. Defer tax on fair value adjustment of 15,000, which you need to adjust. So please check it out. I'm going to calculate goodwill, just giving you 30 seconds to walk through it. next next c i am going to calculate this goodwill c lot of data i have written re written ready made because i have already explained you first of all coi in coi there are two types of consideration in this question first is cash consideration so 100000 shares were already issued by s company and we bought 80% we bought 80% so 80000 Shares multiply by dollar five per share cash. So four hundred thousand is your cash consideration. Then eighty thousand into one upon four. You remember the exchange deal, exchange share exchange, and one share of us cost thirteen. So it's two sixty. This thing I have already explained you. That's why not giving time now. So four hundred plus two sixty is six sixty thousand. Then fair value of NCI is two twenty thousand multiply by this is the share price of subsidiary company. Okay, so it's going to be one sixty thousand. So now you have now you have a balance of 820,000 now. Next, less fair value of net assets of Trudeau's. So how much is the carrying value of all net assets? It's ready-made given. It's 747, 747,600. 747,600. Then you have upward fair value adjustment plant of 50,000. So it will increase your net assets. And then you have a defer tax on fair value adjustment, defer tax of 30%. Wait, 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 wait. See, this is C is equal to A minus L. So defer tax is a liability. So when your liability goes up, when your liability goes up at acquisition date, your net assets will go down. Okay. So ultimately you need to subtract, you need to subtract this defer tax on fair value adjustment from net assets. So now can you net it off these three? If you net off these three, it will become 782, 782, 600. Now we can easily calculate goodwill and the goodwill will be 37,400 is your final goodwill. 37,400. This is very easy step. This is not difficult in your F7, FR level thing, level times you have done this thing many times. Okay, now this is the goodwill which we acquired. Now let's come to the question. Final thing, final thing. Listen, in the opening and closing balance, they have all they have also given you goodwill. See, let me increase the screen. See, they have also given you goodwill opening and closing. Can you see? 
goodwill opening and closing is also given so that you can make a goodwill account so that you can make a goodwill account and you calculate the balancing figure of impairment so let me use these opening and closing see so the opening balance opening balance is 441000 opening goodwill is 441000 and closing goodwill is 44 447 447 400 four four seven four hundred now wait and how much goodwill see this is the opening and closing and now can you tell me that we we just acquired trudeau's we just acquired trudeau's trudeau's and how much goodwill we paid for trudeau it was thirty seven thousand and four hundred okay now use your brain use your brain your opening goodwill balance is 441,000. Add this goodwill. So if you add these two, 441 plus 37,400, it will be a big number. But suddenly you check that the closing balance is only 447,400. So that means there is some impairment. And that impairment is 31,100. This is the balancing figure. And yes, impairment of goodwill. Impairment of goodwill is a non-cash expense. So as this is a non-cash expense, it will be added back in operating activities as it is a non-cash expense it will be added back in operating activities operating activities adjustment for remember so this is the last thing which i have calculated this is the last thing which i have calculated Now, so what I have calculated, let me show you. The first thing is I'll be doing the adjustment in receivable, payable, and in receivable, payable, and inventory like this, like this. I'll do this in pre populated sheet. Be careful, don't forget. Then I made this PP account for you. You can always make an account as well as you can do in columnar form, columns in column one, in like statements. Okay. Then I made this tax account for you then i calculated this goodwill for you see students we i calculated this goodwill for you this is easy thing then i made this goodwill account for you okay so in short i have done every every single thing i have done every single thing for the practical requirement and now finally finally i have to make see this this is all whatever you can see here this is all will be given in the pre-populated sheet and i'll do the excel work for you i'll do the excel work for you and for that i need to shift my screen i'll do it but before i shift my screen let me complete the theory requirements which are which are comparatively easy which are comparatively easy comparatively easy you just need to explain all these things you just need to explain all these things all these things in simple theory language theory language okay whatever is happening in the cash flow they have asked you why it is it happening why are you adjusting these things okay so go and read the requirement number two. Go and read the requirement number two. This is the requirement number two, 10 marks. This is the requirement number two, 10 marks. Okay. So they are saying explain, explain the adjustments required to correct the oper operating and investing activities of the consolidated as statement of cash flow for the Kabilo. That means, yes, only for this, com only for this question, you need to do it. You don't need to discuss everything, everything there in real life. There are hundreds of transactions which you need to adjust. You don't need to discuss everything only for this question. Whatever is given in this question, whatever transactions are given in the in the question, you just need to discuss that. You just need to discuss that. You just need to discuss that.
you just need to discuss that you just need to discuss that right okay okay let me let me explain you everything so i have already just to save our time our precious time i have already written some points so that we can easily walk through it okay so for the first thing is this is i have copied the requirement as well see this is the requirement and the first thing is state the rule you know how to write first you write the general rules and then you do the application so the first point be careful be active it's all the previous things which you have done in your studies right so they are saying in indirect method just just close your eyes and think in what what we do in indirect method operating activities we start things from pbt we start our cash flow from pbt the profit number and the and then we convert it into a cash flow so the main target is the main objective is to convert profit into cash flow the main objective is to convert profit into cash flow profit into cash flow right okay so if you want to convert profit into cash flow yes you need to adjust the non cash items and you know you add back non cash expenses you add back non cash expenses because the non cash expenses have just reduced your profit but they are not a genuine cash flows so you are going from profit to cash flow so you need to add back and now just write the famous examples of non cash expenses are depreciation expense amortization expense impairment expense okay and sometime warranty provisions as well so see these are the examples i have written similarly we must deduct listen we add back non cash expense and we less we deduct the non cash incomes and one of the famous non cash incomes are the amortization of government grants gain on disposals like these okay so this is the some starting state the rule okay now the next thing apply the rule firstly you know as i have just calculated impairment of goodwill with you guys i have just calculated impairment of goodwill with you guys so impairment of goodwill is a non cash expense so we need to add back okay so just i have explained this in very simple words simple words you can see you can see firstly in operating activities there is a need to add back impairment of goodwill right then now we need to show the effect of tax paid remember the tax paid in this question th these guys has by mistakenly recorded tax expense as tax paid so this is wrong there is a dif dif difference between tax expense and tax paid because the tax account includes the effects of defer tax on revaluation and other items as well so we have to calculate the defer tax on revaluation which is 50000 multiplied by 30% and then we need to adjust in the account and then the balancing figure will be tax paid okay this is all what i have explained here this is all what i have explained here now similarly we need there is a need to adjust the movements in inventory receivables and trade payables now something i have written more because accountant has just taken the opening and closing balances to calculate the movement did you see accountant just used the opening and closing balance and that closing balance that closing balance also includes that subsidiary event because during the year we bought the subsidiary during the year we bought the subsidiary so when we buy subsidiary we buy everything of it like inventory receivable and payable so these closing balances at the year end includes that subsidiary effect which we needs to remove so you need to write this in your own words here okay moreover in investing 
activities of cash flow acquisition of trudeau's should be included as an outflow but there is a need to remove non-cash transaction which are okay yes 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 i am extreme listen we bought the company through two two consideration we gave cash consideration and shares consideration listen shares consideration means exchange of shares shares consideration means exchange of shares it's not a cash flow shares consideration means exchange of cash it's exchange of shares it's not a cash flow so we didn't record it okay right but yes the cash consideration we paid 4 lakh 400 thousand cash consideration but remember i gave you the example of this wallet remember this wallet example that in ca in cash consideration okay we we did 400000 outflow but that subsidiary contains already 24000 something cash so the net net impact we need to take net impact we need to take okay so you have to re return all those things see this see this just after the acquisition of the cash balances existing on acquisition see this thing this thing we applied should be treated as an cash addition to the group yes that means some cash is coming in and some cash is going out so net amount we need to report net amount see this is the net net word Now the cash paid to acquire property, plant and equipment. Remember the property, plant and equipment account. We need to make the property, plant and equipment account on. There were some non-cash transactions. Like if you buy a subsidiary, you have paid everything in the beginning. So whatever is included in that subsidiary like PPE, you don't, you don't have, you, did, you didn't pay anything separate for that. Okay. So the cash, the additions, Whenever you buy a subsidiary, there are some property, plant and equipment present in the subsidiary. That's not a cash flow. Okay. That's not a cash flow. You didn't pay anything cash directly for that. So you need to write that in account and then the balancing figure will come for the cash addition. See, read it. The cash paid to acquire property, plant and equipment during, during there must exclude. Remember the balancing figure exclude means the balancing, the effect of the acquisition of Trudeau's company. It must be noted that the initial recognition of the non-current asset is not a cash flow of for the Kabilo group. Yes, you got, you paid complete for the subsidiary, not for the separate plant. And now the last thing, last thing. Hope you remember, hope you remember my initial lectures. If you have studied from me, whenever I teach group, consolidated cash flow or group cash flow i always say that always think like a group always think like a group and only consider those cash flows only consider those cash flows which are relevant for the group like if something is going out of the group and something is coming in in the group so you need to take the net impact how much is the net impact how much is the net impact from for the group point of view or if it is happening that S company is giving paying some cash to P company, so this cash is moving inside. Inside, it's not a it's not a group cash flow. It's not a group cash flow at all. It's not a group cash flow at all. See another reason for reason read this line under another reason for adjusting the statement of Kabilo Group's cash flow is that since the net assets of Trudeau will be consolidated, the effects of the acquisition must be 
eliminated so that the movements on the assets and liabilities reflect only cash flows incurred by the group during the year yes remember if this is a very good logic very excellent logic you know when you buy the company take at the time of takeover you can you do cancellation at the time of takeover whatever net assets you bought from subsidiary acquisition date net assets are cancelled with the investment this is the basic thing i'm telling you acquisition date net assets are cancelled with the are cancelled with the investment of p company so that's why we remove we remove the that inventory receivable and payable balances okay and we only include the future cash flows the future post cash flows okay this is also one of the very good logic now this is the answer of the first 10 marks 10 marks theory requirement now my dear students my dear student there is one last requirement and before we go to that last requirement just read this financial instrument thing it's it's not the financial instrument like you think ifrs 9 and hedging and all no 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 the basic discussion this is basic discussion listen First, read it and then I'll show you the requirement. The Cabillo Group has a number of financial instruments presented within the Consolidated Financial Statement statement of Financial Position. Some group entities which had surplus cash had acquired, purchased, purchased, acquired debentures in other non-group entities to increase returns. Yes, what does it mean? Whenever you buy a debenture, that means you are investing in debentures. You are investing in debentures and then whenever you are investing, you get a future return. So this will go in investing activities. This will buying, buying a debenture will go in investing activities. You know, buying an invest, buying a debenture means you are giving loan. You are giving loan. So that means you are doing investment in future. You will get the return in future. You will get the return. So you are doing, you are doing investment. Okay. Other group entities has had raised finance by issuing. This is issuing bonds. Issuing bonds means you are taking loan. You are taking loan. You are taking loan. And whenever we take loan, it go in financing activities. It go in financing. So you will have to write it's a financing activities cash flow. Now, Kabilo company finance the acquisition of Trudeau's by acquiring a bank loan. Yes. So you are buying, taking a loan. Loan. So loan means it will go in the financing activities. Loan is a financing cash flow. But yes, whatever you are investment you are doing, it will go in the investing activities as I have already told you. Now the last. Kabilo company, this is all basics. Now basic is coming. Had an overdrawn bank balance as at 31st December X5. As at 31st December X5. The overdrawn bank balance fluctuates regularly from an in funds balance to an overdraft balance. Yes. This so it's a routine overdraft, routine overdraft plus minus plus minus. You know, if you have done cash flow, basic cash flow in your life, then you know the this bank balance, bank balance or cash, whatever cash you have in the draw, whatever cash you have in the draw, plus whatever cash you have in the bank balance, they all they all are used to do you they are they all are used to tie the cash flow in the end. They are never recorded in any activity. In the end, when you when you complete the cash flow, these balances, these cash and bank, cash and bank balances are used. These cash and bank balances are used, my dear students. These cash and bank balances are used to calculate, to tie the cash flow. So overdrawn is also part of the bank balance. Overdrawn, sometimes bank balance has a positive bank balance, sometimes it's a negative bank balance. So overdraft ultimately is the part of overdraft is ultimately is the part of your cash and cash equivalent and it it is used to tie the cash flow nothing it it doesn't come in any any activity it does not come in any activity right now read the requirement read, read the third requirement my dear students please it's six i would say these are six free marks six free marks free 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 okay using exhibit two advise the financial controller as how the various financial instruments including the bank overdraft should be presented in the consolidated statement of cash flow i've just explained you but yes i will also be teaching you through state the rule 
the, the basic thing how to present it let me move the screen see this is your heading see i have already copied the question so first of all state the rule now you just have to explain investing and financing activities investing activities are those activities which are intended to generate future incomes yes if you buy a property in future you get rental incomes if you buy shares if you in in future you get ordinary dividends right if you buy property plan and equipment in future they it helps you to earn in your routine operations okay so whenever you do an investment you get future income so it's cash flows it gen intended to generate future incomes cash flows and lead business towards expansion like purchase of ppe is classified under investing activity very simple definition right now financing activities this is very good i love it financing activities are those activities which change the financing structure shape of your financing structure of the organization now listen 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 let me explain to you let us say this is your financing structure so you have equity and you have debt loan normally your financing structure is considered of two things so now listen to me whatever whatever cash flow changes whatever cash flow changes the shape of this financing structure will go in the financing activity so if you have issued new shares so new shares will increase your equity if you have shares new if you have issued new shares so it will increase your equity see the shape is changing so it so the issue of shares issue of shares there is a cash flow and issue of shares it will go here if you have taken new loan so yes it will increase your debt if you have taken new loan so it will increase your debt see there is a change in the shape of the financial structure so if you have taken loan it will go in financing activities now if you repaid the loan see if you have repaid the loan you repaid the loan so your debt will be reduced so automatically once again the shape of your financing structure will change the shape of your financing structure will change right so it will also come in the financing activities now the last but not the least last but not the least last and last thing is if you are paying ordinary dividends listen to me ordinary dividends are paid ordinary dividends are paid from retained earning and yes retained earning is part of equity so when you pay ordinary dividend your equity or retained earning goes down so see the shape is changing so ordinary dividends paid are also part of financing activities okay so i have explained you these two points now apply the rule see this firstly issue of bonds issue of bonds means you are taking loan taking loan are similar in nature to bank borrowings yes as it is used to finance the long term activities of the entity hence it will be classified in financing activities okay this is the first point and the second point i have written with the pen see this is the second investment in debentures they have already told you the investment in debentures investment in debentures okay that means you are giving loan to somebody so it's like generating future cash flow so it will go in investing activities it will go in investing activities now the third thing is overdraft the overdraft should be classified as part of cash and cash equivalent yes because the bank balance can be both positive as well as negative yes overdraft is basically the bank balance and bank balance is used to tie in the end so it is justified that overdraft is considered important to the cash management of the business on a regular basis now one extra line i am adding you if you forgot, if you don't write it in the exam still it's perfect if you don't even write it in the exam still it is perfect listen and that thing is if for example there is a company who is using overdraft as a long term finance like they have overdraft for life last two years or three years constant overdraft then you can say that overdraft is part of financing activities but this is normally not the case because overdraft is basically an expensive very expensive source of finance and you sometimes use this facility on urgent basis for few days like if you have shortage in the payment for paying electricity bill telephone bills wages or sometimes you have shortage to pay inventory so that's why you you use it because it's an expensive source but if you want to finance something long term so you go for long term loans with less interest rate okay so just for example i am giving you this thing
so finally we have done the two requirements my dear students now before we move on to before we move on to pre-populated area just you can see this all these things i have already explained you see this goodwill calculation yes this total tax account this pp and goodwill account and this thing you will find this thing my dear students you will find in in the exam for pre-populated which i will just show you okay so you just need to make two activities if you want to read the question this is the question you can pause your screen and you can read it anytime you can pause your screen and you can read it anytime as per your wish okay so now we are shifting towards the pre-populated area the last requirement okay dear students so now we are moving towards this pre-populated sheet this will be given to you in the exam but now one thing is very important all these side things the this 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 will be ready-made given to you in the exam this first column will also be given to you ready-made in the exam but yes these headings you need to give yourself these headings you need to give yourself okay so now let's start the first thing is PBT. There is no changes. We, we are not required to do any changes in PBT. Please hope you remember the adjustments. Even you can rewind the you have the recorded lecture so you can revise it anytime. OK, so this will be copied here as it is. No adjustment in PBT. Now, yes, depreciation expense will be added back and it is given perfect. Now, the third thing is impairment impairment of goodwill. You have to write here sorry see this impairment is this was the blank space in the original question so you need to write here impairment of goodwill hope you remember impairment of goodwill is a non-cash expense so you need to you need to add it back and it was i think 31 100 it was 31 100 okay now let's come to this working capital area increase in inventory increase or decrease in receivable and payable I hope you remember as the closing balances includes closing balances includes the impact of that new subsidiary Trudeau's so I told you when we when we will reduce the closing balance automatically the increased increased amount will be reduced so now we have to write as these two are negative numbers so we need to write positive positive number in front so it's two five six eight hundred for inventory and then you have two two zero three hundred for receivable and then you have listen this is positive number so we'll write negative here negative one seven five four hundred okay let me adjust now it see this these two we need to net off okay then then again these two then again these two okay so finally finally okay so finally this has become a positive number so this is also change this receivable has also changed from increase to decrease okay because decrease in receivables is increase in cash okay so now we need to calculate cash generated from operations it's one double five zero two six zero one double five zero two six zero one double five zero two six zero okay now then taxation paid what was the correct number for taxation paid do you remember the t account i made for you guys so the correct number for taxation paid was correct number was 413200 so it's 413200 okay so now finally this is going to be your cash inflow from operating activities or net cash flow from operating activities so operating activities are done operating activities are done now let's go to investing in investing activities you know we write 
outflows and inflows outflows and inflows outflows and inflows outflows and inflows of PPE purchase of property plant and equipment proceeds from disposal of pro property plant and equipment and if you have done any other investment cash flow so yes in this question there is there is some outflow for pp and hope you remember the pp account so the correct number was six nine seven six six zero remember but they have written only five four three six hundred so i will write the correct number six nine seven double six zero and then then we have you remember see it is written it is written here consideration paid for the acquisition of trudeau now now listen for the acquisition of trudeau it was four hundred thousand four hundred thousand we paid cash but when we bought that subsidiary there was some there was some already cash existed in that subsidiary and that was i think two four nine hundred that was two four nine hundred remember so this this outflow you need to report here this outflow you need to report here let me write it's 375 100 okay this is outflow because we acquired it net outflow now let's so this final number is 1072 760 1072 okay so finally we have made we have calculated these two we have updated these two activities we have updated these two activities okay now as a student you may think this may come in your mind sir this is so easy just one minute thing no for this five minutes we have worked hard like half an hour or one hour you remember the t account which i was making for ppe taxation fair value adjustment goodwill calculation everything was related to this part and yes in the exam you need to show working here you need to show working here but yes i have already showed working in the above with the with the pen and paper right in the ipad so that working is enough but you in the exam you need to do working here you can make key accounts here as well or you can if you are comfortable with the statement form if you are comfortable with the statement form follow that statement form i repeat in the t account how we do it we add one side and we subtract one side and then we get the balancing figure so you can do it in the columnar form like in the statement form add first add things and then subtract things to get the balancing figure okay so in this way you can also do it so this is your final updated file this is your final updated file you can have a look on it and i'll share this file on the group as well right okay so this requirement is also done please it's a request for you guys to solve this question again please don't rely on teachers just after 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 watching this class try to do at least this pre-populated part again i request many students that for this pre-populated part do maximum practice do maximum practice okay so that's it for today's class thank you and take care